Well, for a little bit more on what this means for bank secrecy, we are joined in the newsroom here by Asher Rubenstein. Asher is an offshore asset protection lawyer. He represented U.S. clients in the UBS tax case. Really, Asher, the, the first time that we heard about secrecy laws, um, let's just say, being a little bit changed or at least being adopted, I guess is the way to put it. So what do you make of this? I mean, how shocked were you when you heard Merkel's comments saying she was willing to pay for stolen data? Well, as we just heard from your correspondent in Bern, it's been done before. About uh, two years ago, you had a um, an insider at LGT Bank in Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein being another former tax Tax haven, who also stole some what was thought to be confidential banking information. He's now on the run. We might. He's now he's now on the run. Last we heard, he's somewhere in Australia. He's uh, he's on the run. Um, if he is ever caught, he would be brought back to Liechtenstein to face charges for stealing banking data, just like it's a crime in Switzerland. But but the chances of him being yanked off a beach in Australia and brought back to Liechtenstein, how likely? Well, you know, that, that that's really a function of how good the, the Liechtenstein pursuers are. Uh, what, we, what we've seen during calendar year 2009 is, is a significant erosion of offshore banking secrecy, and you have it on a number of different levels. You had UBS capitulating to the IRS lawsuit against it and settling and, and offering uh, data on uh, American account holders in, Lichten, in, in Switzerland, thousands of account holders. At the same time, at the governmental level, you have all of the former tax havens changing their laws and allowing for increased transparency. And what we have here now with the German situation is, is a third threat to banking secrecy. It's not a new threat, but it's a parallel threat. And that is you have rogue, renegade employees within the bank stealing confidential data and offering it to foreign governments to pursue their citizens for, uh, on the basis of tax evasion. So, Asher, let's just kind of boil it all down to the bottom line. If you're an American citizen, you have funds. I mean, it's still legal to have an offshore account, right? A absolutely. And there are many good reasons for an American American citizens to have money offshore. Maybe you do business offshore and you need a bank account offshore to receive funds from your clients. Maybe you own real estate offshore and you're making your mortgage payments from that account. Uh, maybe you send your kids for a semester abroad and they need access to funds. There are plenty of good reasons to have an account offshore and it's legal, provided that A, you disclose that account to the U.S. government and B, you pay taxes on any income in that account. If you do A and B, then you're compliant and whatever happens with Swiss banking law, Law, whatever happens with renegade employees stealing data, you should feel confident that so long as your account is compliant, you're okay. But here's the big, I mean, basically, if you are using that offshore account to hide income, not declare taxes, then at the very least, you have to rethink your strategy. It's it's unbelievably foolish to, to continue on that road. Uh, given everything that's happened in the last year or two, there is really no more foreign banking secrecy vis-a-vis -vis your tax authority. There is still excellent asset protection by going offshore vis-a-vis -vis civil creditors and litigants against you. But you cannot be offshore with any expectation of hiding income from the IRS or Revenue Canada or whatever your home tax authority is. All right. Asher, we thank you as always. Thanks, Asher Rubenstein there from Rubenstein and Rubenstein.